Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to continue our path on Animal Park Animal Draw. In the previous video, we coded the camera, photo gallery, and reset buttons. In this video, we will, we will continue our path to complete this app. Now, we need to code our colors, our dot size, and our line size. Here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So I'm going to leave the colors for last. Let's focus on when I drag around the screen or when I simply click the screen, which is a dot. So that is, let's think about this. When a pencil is pushed on a piece of paper and you pick it up, what shape does it actually leave? It leaves a circle. So we want to, when someone touches, just clicks on our canvas, we want to leave a circle, which is a dot. So let's program that first, and then we'll worry about increasing and decreasing the dot size here. But if somebody puts a pencil down on the screen and then they start dragging around, it makes lines. So we're going to do the exact same thing. When someone clicks and drags on our screen, just like if they click, if they put a pencil on a piece of paper and dragged around, we are going to draw a line and we'll deal with this slider for the size of it in a second. So let's first focus on dot size. So we have three things to say. When, let's just first put a simple dot on the canvas. So I'm going to go to canvas so we can explore it a little bit more. And you can see here are the brown blocks, which we have to choose from. One is called dragged. One is called flung. You can use that inside of games, for example like Angry Birds or when you're throwing stuff. You have touch down, touch up, and you have touched. So when someone simply touches a pencil to a piece of paper, they put a dot. Well, when someone touches on our canvas, we want to put a dot. And you can see here, I'm gonna to use touched. So when someone touches our screen, if you look at this block, it gives us an X, it gives us an Y, and it gives us if we touch an actual sprite. Right now we wanna focus on X and Y. X is your X well, and this is your Y, going up and down. And this top left corner is your zero, zero. So this point is zero, zero. Going to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way through whatever the width of this is, that is your X. This is your Y, from zero Y here, going down to one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to whatever the height of the remaining of this canvas is. So if I click here, I wanna know the exact X and Y. Well, whenever you touch a canvas, it gives you those two values. So it's very simple for us to make a dot. Whenever someone touches the canvas, we're going to get this X and Y, and we're going to draw a circle exactly at that X and Y. So how do we draw a circle? Well, that's one of the procedures that are already included inside of Canvas. So if we click on Canvas, these are our events, our brown blocks. Below that, Canvas has a bunch of procedure blocks. So you can see all these purple blocks that are included with Canvas. And one of them is right here called Draw Circle. So I'm going to pull this in. It tells me where do you want the center of the circle to be, the X. Well, I want it right here. Again, don't click on it. You're just going to mouse over it. I'm going to get my X. See my Y here. I'm going to mouse over it. I'm going to get my Y. Now the radius. The radius, we can make it, it can be a number. So again, I, I want it to be five. So for right now, let's just test this by putting five in here. I'm gonna to go to math, top left. I'm going to pull in zero, and I'm just gonna type five. Now, anytime I touch my canvas, it should draw a circle at the X and Y with a radius of five. And right here, you can see it says fill is true. We'll play with that once we just test it. So right now, Here's my app. If I touch, you can see it is making a circle at the X and Y with a radius of five. Let's just show you what it looks like if I do fill is false. It makes these type of circles, which is something you might want to do. And you can add functionality for that. And again, if I wanted to clear the screen, well, we haven't focused on that yet. But so if I push reset, Look what happens. Even when I do canvas background image to that, it resets everything. So again, I can add a bunch of stuff. Resetting. And it clears the canvas. But to be sure, I'm going to go back to canvas. 
and you can see right here is the very first block is clearing the canvas and I'm going to add my comment clear the paint from the canvas so you see it is working so now where the third piece is clearing the paint from the canvas we're also clearing the background pictures so now I'm going to turn fill back to true and I want to increase my dock size well nothing's happening or decrease my dock size well nothing's happening it's still the same size well why is it the same size it's because I'm saying anytime someone touched the canvas draw it with the radius of five so always draw it as the radius of five if I want that to change I'm going to need to have a way to have a variation of what that value is so anytime you want to have a value that you want to reference or change you need to make a variable that's something also you're going to need to do in your create performance task later on the AP computer science principles exam right here variables in the MIT app inventor I click on that I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to call it dot size now my original dot size is going to be five so I'm going to drag this and put it here now I need to replace radius now now I don't want to go and put another five in there I actually want it to be this variable because this variable is going to change which means vary right so again I can don't click on it that means you want to rename it you can mouse over it or you can actually go back to variables and pull in the get block and do dot size so now let's see if it works I, I, I made a variable it's five and I put it right here let's just make sure that this works I want to reset first and then now so it's still working but now this is not working up and down is not working so let's increase and decrease our dot size now that we have a variable we can change this variable we simply need to program these two buttons so I can go to image dot size plus I'm gonna pull that out and image dot size minus I'm gonna pull that out so let's just think about this dot size is five if someone press image dot size plus dot size should go to six and then if dot size is six and someone presses this button it should go to seven so all we're gonna do is add one to the dot size when we add one we also want to make sure we update this label so if we go back to design again this is just a label we don't want it to say dot size five forever we also want to make sure we update that so here let me just add my comment number one add one to the current dot size and two update the label dot size shown to the user so part one let's increase the dot size I'm simply gonna mouse over this pull in my set now I want to add one to this well addition comes from the subject called math you can see math is right here click on that here is my addition block connect that in there and go back to math because I want to add one so I'm gonna pull in zero I'll add one now I want to add one to the current dot size so I'm gonna go back here I'm gonna get my current dot size so don't get confused by this this is saying set the current dot size to whatever my dot size currently is which is five plus one five plus one is six so now dot size is six so if we did it again it would say six plus one is seven dot size is now seven so that's part one add one to the current dot size then we want to update the label shown to the user which is this so let me just show you why you need part two right now let's reset Resetting. I want to do a dot that's my dot size five if I do plus 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 I hit it four times that's now my dot size but it still says five if I add it five more one two three four five one two three So you can see this is working but this label is not being updated that's the reason we need to update part two update that label that label we called LBL dot size and you can see LBL dot size the text property it says dot size colon whatever the current number is so we're just going to update this property remember properties blocks are, are the green blocks so I'm going to go to LBL dot size I want to update the text property 
you can see there's two. This is getting the text, light green. This is changing the text. I want to get that. I'm gonna try to connect this and update the label with my dot size. So I'll put it in here. Now it says five and I've pressed plus a bunch of times, but it's not five. That's super, super big. When I press plus now, because I've updated this label, watch what happens. I'm gonna lose my dot size. See, now it just says 26. Every time I push it, it's just giving me the size, but I really wanna keep this. I wanna keep this dot size colon in front so they know what that number means. So how can we do that? This only has one thing to put in. Well, this is just text, so we can actually join two text together. We've used this before. So on the left side, we're gonna click on text. You can see I'm gonna only use the first one, I wanna use the second one, which is join. Pull this out. I'm gonna put dot size in the second one. And I'm going to click back on text. I'm gonna put this in the first one. And I'm simply gonna say dot size. So now, if I press plus, you can see it updates the dot size. So now we have to do the exact same thing for minus. But here's something I don't like. If I do reset, I want to reset the dot size back to what we originally had, which was five. And I want to update this label. So again, if I do resetting, it's still at 57. So it's no way for me to go down unless I do minus, 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 minus. So when we do reset all, this is going to get longer. Number four, let's reset dot size to five. Five, we wanna update the dot size label to the user. So here, number four, I wanna reset the dot size to five because I don't like that when I click reset, it stays here. So I'm just gonna go over here. I'm gonna pull in my set. And again, I'm going to go to math, pull in my number and put in five. So I still need to update the label. So I need this, but versus duplicating this, remember, do not repeat yourself. Right now I just, I literally am repeating myself. I just duplicated it. Let's make one other procedure and we're gonna call it update display. So I'm gonna click on procedures here. I'm gonna pull in another procedure and I'm gonna call it update display to user. And let me just add my comment. So this is going to one, so it's gonna update the dot size shown to the user. So versus having it two places and duplicating myself, I'm just gonna pull this in here. And now I can go back to procedures, update display to user, I'm gonna pull that in here. I'm gonna get rid of this as well. I'm gonna delete those blocks and I'm going to pull update display to user here. So now even when I reset or I do the dot size increase, my label will get updated and it will increase. So right now, if I click on reset, Resetting. look what happened. My dot size is now five. If I add a bunch, my labels is, I've made it 20, uh, 33. When I press reset, Resetting. it resets my dot size back down to five where we started with. So Resetting. I like that. Now let's deal with the minus. So for minus, pause the video and I want you to try on your own how to actually do image dot size minus. It's gonna be very similar to image dot size plus. Go ahead and give it a try. So hopefully you figured this out. Very similar, the only difference is you have a plus versus a minus here. And you can see, you should have tested it. If I go up or down, it works. So that's five, if I go up to 10, go up to 16, 18, then I might go down to 11 and down to four. So that is how you do image dot size minus. But there is a problem. Maybe you did not think about this, but right now it's at two. Let's see if we go down to one, that's one. Can we go down to zero? Yeah. Can we go down to negative one? Yeah. So here's a runtime logic area. Why can't we go down to negative numbers? That doesn't make sense. 
doesn't make sense to have a zero dot size. Why would someone have a zero dot size? That's invisible. So this was correct, it's kind of tricky, but we have to limit this. We don't want any negative numbers. We don't want any number less than one. So how are we gonna do that? Computers use conditionals to make decisions, which are if statements. You will use this in every programming language you ever use. You're also gonna need this on the AP Create task where you create your own app later on in this year. To get the conditionals, we're gonna to go to control. You can see the very first block is an if statement. I'm gonna pull this, I'm gonna connect it in here. Well, what do we want to limit? I'm just gonna push reset. Resetting. I wanna limit, and you can do this a bunch of ways. I want one to be the lowest number. So if, the, if I'm at two, I can go down to one. But if I'm at one, I should not be able to press minus. Let's limit it by saying when the dot size equals to one, we're gonna say smallest dot size for each. Very simple, so if dot size is equal to one. So I'm gonna say math, here's my equal. I wanna get my dot size if it's equal to one. What do I wanna do in here? I want to speak to the user and say smallest dot size reached. Pull in my text. So now let's see. So let's reset this. Resetting. So now I can go down. When I get down to one, I don't want to put this block here. I actually want to put it inside the condition. That way we can never get down below one. So I have two conditions really. If the dot size is one or else it's greater than one. And we know it's going to be greater than one because it, we're starting at five. So I'm going to click on this little blue settings icon. Remember any block in App Inventor that has this blue settings, you can actually add. We can do else if, for example, I could have said I can duplicate this and I can say if dot size is greater than one, then what I want to do is this would work. So if dot size is one, you're going to say that. If dot size is greater than one, go ahead and reduce the dot size. Let's just see that this works. Resetting. So now it's at five, four, three, two, one. Now when I press smallest dot size reach, smallest dot size reach. Well, why is that working? Because we're saying if the dot size is greater than one, go ahead and subtract one from it. But since it's currently one, it won't execute this code. So you could do it this way, or I could have did an else statement. So I'm gonna pull this down. So I could have did if dot size is one, you're gonna say that, or else I can subtract one. So I'm gonna reset first. Resetting. Let's see that it works. When I get down to one, it still works. Smallest dot size reach. So you can see. Smallest dot size reach. So. Smallest dot size reach. You can see I could do either one. I can say greater than or equal to one, or I can do an else statement here. Well, we'll talk about conditionals later on in the year, so don't wanna confuse you with if and else statements. So I'm gonna click back, and I'm gonna change this to else if. I'm gonna put this back here so it's very clear to you. I'm gonna delete my else. So again, if the dot size is equal to one, we'll say smallest dot size reached, or else, that means it's greater than one, we can actually subtract one from it. So there is our dot size. So we're finished with dot size and this video. In the next video, we'll work with line size. Line size will be a lot easier and you'll learn how to use the slider.